what do all of these modules have in common? Two things. First, they're all CV modules, that is, they don't produce any audio, but control multiple musical parameters. They include some of the most frequently used modules in Eurolac world, including a sequencer, a quantizer, a maths, a Turing machine, an ornament and crime, a clock divider, an LFO, an envelope, a boolean. And the other thing that they have in common is that they can all be replaced with a single module. This is the Droid Multipurpose CV Processor. It's an 8 input, 8 output CV wizard masterpiece where every pair of channels can be assigned to any CV functionality you could possibly imagine. Envelope generators, Turing machines, LFOs, quantizers, sequences, you name it. And contrary to other multipurpose modules like the Ornament and Crime, these different functions can run simultaneously on different inputs and outputs. So you can have like three pairs of inputs and outputs used as envelopes, and then you can have an LFO on the next one, and a Turing machine on the next one, and a random gate generator on the next one, and another LFO on the next one, and the possibilities are endless. This is absolutely mind-blowing. It's an absolute game-changer, in my opinion, in the modular world. It's one of the most versatile, fantastic modules I have ever seen, and I've never seen anything like it when it comes to cramming functionality into HP, because this is only H 8 HPs wide, and it comes with um, an expander. You can chain up to 16 of these expanders with pots and buttons uh, that give you control of the different parameters of this thing. The only downside is that the different CV things that it does and that it can do, you need to program these yourself with its own little program language that comes along with it. It's not really a program language, it's just a scripting language. And it's really easy. You don't need to be a computer geek or nerd. You don't need to know anything about programming to be able to do this, but it does take a little bit of learning, but it's absolutely worth it. So for example, the way in which I have this currently set up is the first pair, three pairs of inputs and outputs serve as envelope generators. Those, so these are ADSR envelope generators. I coded them in such a way that the A, the D, and the S are hard-coded to numbers that I found useful. And you can change the R parameter of these three envelopes with this pot. And the cool thing about it is that you can program it in such a way that depending on the state of the different buttons, the pots do different things. You can chain up to 16 of these pots and button expanders next to each other to one droid, and they don't need extra power. They get their power from the droid itself, which I think is awesome, especially in a small rack like this one. And on top of it all, it sounds really, really awesome. Listen to this buttery smooth envelope um, hitting on a very unreliable VCA, which is the Adopfer A132-4. Listen to this. It's really smooth. Yeah, so, as you can hear, just as an 8-channel ADSR, this would probably already worth uh, its money. But the way I've set this up in this particular patch is 
Only the first three pairs of inputs and outputs serve as ADSRs. And, well, actually, there is another, there is a fourth ADSR here, but I don't have another sequencer. So what I did here, let me quickly hit the stop button. So what I did here is, uh, not only do I have another envelope on this pair, but I've set up internally of this thing, a Turing machine that runs on channel five. So we're going to take um, a clock and send it to in five here. And then uh, we're going to take the Turing machine output from out five here, which is now stepped quantized CV because you can actually slap a quantizer behind the Turing machine internally. Um, so this is now a quantized Turing machine. Um, and then this goes uh, into another voice that I have here, which is the Clavis um, twin waves. And uh, of course, this needs uh, a set of gates. Um, so we'll take another trigger from a Temps Util, which is this. Um, and that's going to trigger our envelope, uh, which is to the right hand side of the screen. And now let's mute all the other channels so that we can only hear the new bit. And let's start the clock again. And there you have it. <laughs> so now, <laughs> I find this hard to believe. In this tiny module, and on just two of the extra channels that I have on top of the three that are already used for envelopes. There's another envelope, and then there's a, a quantized Turing machine on these two. And there's still three free channels for which you can do anything. Uh, so for example, on channel seven, as you can see, uh, I have uh, an LFO, because this thing does anything, uh, which we can plug in here. Which now alters the parameter of the of the voice. Never mind. But you know, there's just so many things that you can do. And the way you set this up is you write a little bit of code, which is your patch. <laughs> That's what they call it internally. Uh, and then you upload that on the little uh, memory card here. And the thing is, this is hot swappable. You can just plug it out, take it out while the thing is playing change something or if you have more of these get another one while you're in the middle of a set when you have kind of a break between tracks or something um, put in put another one in and then just push this button you will get a bit of a, an interrupt when you do that like this um, and there you go and then it goes again so this is hot swappable and there are so many uh, possibilities um, I'll show you a few code examples, but already at this point, this is like having a complete VCV rack for CV in your modular on an extremely small footprint. And although the price may be daunting at first, because the thing is 400 euros, and these expenders, these expenders are, I think, 110 each, but the thing is, the way you have to look at this is that this, with its eight channels that can be freely used simultaneously for different things at very, very high quality, this replaces like easily half a dozen modules and you end up saving all the money. So I cannot recommend this strongly enough. This is an absolute game changer in the modular world. And I still haven't mentioned who did this. So this is Der Mann mit der Maschine. This is how it's pronounced. Der Mann mit der Maschine, which is Matthias Kettner. Uh, you have, may have seen his YouTube video, videos. He's the genius behind the Symphonion. And uh, what I found out looking at the back of the PCP inside of this thing, it says hardware design uh, by, by, uh, by VPME. So it's the wonderful Vladimir from, uh, from VPME.de who brought us modules such as the Euclidean Circles. 
uh, who apparently helped design the hardware of this uh, on the basis, I would assume, of a concept that Der Mann mit der Maschine came up with. Yes, for all you non-German native speakers out there, that's how you pronounce it. It's Der Mann mit der Maschine, yeah? And look, they even pack a nifty little blind panel uh, for for filling this one HP gap because this expander, which is a bit of a shame, it is five um, HP wide. I wish it was just four, um, but you know, that's really such a small downside. Oh, and one thing that I still need to mention, you can get another gates expander for this, which gives you another eight uh, input outputs that can be trigger inputs or outputs. So think of this as the gates expander to the Turing machine, but just freely configurable as eight inputs, outputs, and there's loads of stuff that you can do. Check out the website and the further documentation of this because this is just awesome. This is the code or patch as it's called that is currently running on the droid in this video. This is a programming script that explains to the module what to do with the different inputs and outputs. A droid patch consists of so-called circuits. These are like keywords written in square brackets that make up the building blocks of the functionality of the droid. And if you look at the great manual that comes with the droid, you can see that there are apparently 36 different circuits that you can use and that you can combine so look, there is a circuit that does an LFO, there is a circuit that, that does a math, there is a circuit called Contour, which is a very powerful envelope generator that can loop and God knows what. There are different quantizers, the Miniphone is the, the Miniphonian, is their musical quantizer, uh, there is a logic module, and you simply write the name of the circuit that you want to use and then you write the very few parameters that the circuit needs to work. For example, a toggle button that's simply on or off. That's how you uh, define the first button on the first expander. So B1.1 is button expander one, button number one, and it switches on and off this LED. And this value of the LED you can then use in other circuits. For example, let me show you what a what an envelope looks like. So this is a simple envelope uh, that receives a gate from input jack one, and I've set decay and sustain hard coded to values that I like between zero and one. Uh, where one corresponds to 10 volts and zero to zero volts. And you can see the release parameter that's received through an internal patch cable, which is equivalent to this virtual pot, which is the position of the potentiometer on the expander, given that switch one is active and that's LED one is active and that's if button one is pressed. Or have a look at what I call the Turing machine. You have the algoquencer, which is the circuit that creates a Turing machine that outputs unquantized looped CV, random looped CV. Um, here I set the length of the loop to 16 steps. And then I feed the CV out, the pitch, into an internal patch cable called TM pitch, I call it that, which is then picked up here by the next circuit uh, where this is then quantized uh, on output number five with a root note that's 10 semitones above the C. So this is A, degree seven is of course the Eolian, so this is A minor and so forth. So this is an example how to combine two circuits to create something uh, of your own. And this is a quantized Turing machine. Um, and then this gives you just an example of how to build a patch and it's not difficult and you know, just need to sit down for maybe one or two hours with the manual, get the basic concepts, and then you're ready to go. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.